no matter the level of salesperson you are, whether you're new or you've been at 30 years. Well, the conversation's easy if you put the time in to prepare yourself on what you're going to say. Like, again, auto word serves it up. You got to take, still going to take that information. You got to go maybe run some numbers, you know, uh, double check the trade value, right? You want to, you want to get yourself grounded with the opportunity that you put a, a light on. You said, Hey, a lot of people coming in today, these three people, you probably should take a really good look at. And if you do that and you walk out to that customer with a game plan, you're in a much better position to earn their business than if you're, you're, you're doing it like a fire drill, right? And and that's what we, we preach to our company. And again, some do it very well in our stores. Others struggle with it. Uh, it does come back to staffing. You know, I, I always ask my manager, I, I use staff to win. Like if you're trying to sell 150 cars a month and, and you have six salesmen, it is not going to happen. Forget auto alert, forget everything. You just can't handle the traffic, the natural traffic. So. You have to make sure you're staffed properly. And if you're staffed properly, you're gonna have salesmen that have time on their hands where they have to go to work. And and that's where a tool like Auto Alert can be so effective. A hundred percent. Now, because of the what's what's happened over the last few years, there's a lot more options for our customers. How do you take advantage of that? Because some people see that as a you know catch twenty two, but I think we can leverage the fact that customers want choices. Um, insert mobile services, whether, you know, you're going to get the customer's car for service or delivering a, a vehicle after you go through the process. Hey, the deal's done. They just want us to bring in the car or they want us to come get their car for some reason. How much do you leverage some of that at some of your stores? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think mobile is important to some people. I think other people could care less about it. Okay. Um, as far as choice goes, they've always had choice. Like, like there's no surprise that there's a plethora of models and options and makes. I think you have to find out what's important to that customer. Like don't play God. That customer could care, maybe care less about mobile service. He wants to bring the car and doesn't want you at their home, right? Yeah. Uh, some people would love that, would love mobile service. So, you know, the needs assessment, how you approach your customer, how you understand what's important to them, what do they want to accomplish today? How they rate a car that they just drove on a scale of one to ten you know they rated an eight what would make it a ten is it just money is it color i think all too often salesmen you know play god take shortcuts on the, on the road to the sale don't utilize the technology that's at their fingertips in, in many in many ways and and therefore don't sell the customer the car i mean you know <laughs> That, that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, and and we all have our our struggles because the dealership's the wild, wild west on a daily basis. You don't know what you're gonna get, you just gotta prepare and go for it. Yeah. So from your scope, right, we're still at the top end of 2024. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges as a dealer? Like, hey, I have to think about all of these things. What are what are the top two or three challenges you think most, most oh God, dealers are, are figuring out? My list. You want my list now? It's, Run it uh, off. It's a long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, we're we're looking at uh, inventories ballooning, uh, front end grosses plummeting, volume kind of stagnant. Like we're we're seeing a little uptick, but nowhere near what I thought. Interest rates are high. The expense to run our dealerships have never been higher in the history of a car dealership. The expenses have never been higher. So trying to manage that expense. Uh, the EV bubble is bursting in a big way. Uh, the infrastructure, quite frankly, is not ready to support the products. It's a shame um, that that I think the, I mean, I, if you want to blame everyone, blame the government, right? They put so much pressure on the OEMs to build electric vehicles, which they have. And by the way, there's some incredible products. Some of the best products I've ever driven are EVs, but you can't charge them. 